then just put the stick all the way to your left left leg or right leg, either way. All the way over, all the way over, like right there. There you go. Oh. Hold it over there. We're a little slow, so the nose kind of scoops out down below. Not a big 31, deal. Then you can just lift it back up to the right. <laughs> The Marchetti S211 is a military fighter jet trainer aircraft, first built in the 1980s. There were only a little over 60 of the aircraft ever built, and they were primarily flown by the Philippine and Singapore Air Force. I was fortunate enough to get a chance to fly one, and boy, was it fun. My name is Chris Kelzer. I'm with Victory Aviation Company, a Texas company. Myself, my partner Tom Paquin, and his brother Chuck Paquin are all involved with Victory Aviation Company. Uh, our background is all military officers and pilots. Myself and Tom were in the Marine Corps as uh, officers and F-18 pilots for a number of years. Chuck was in the Navy as a Navy pilot, uh, also a jet pilot, went into the reserves, still flew in the reserves, and then got into business. One of the things we talk about here is an uncommon background for, for Tom and I, and Chuck really as well, with military, officer leadership, aviation, general aviation backgrounds, blended with business. And so now we've combined, for Victory Aviation Company, we've combined this uncommon background with uncommon aviation assets with the SNJ or T6 section in the back with the Marchetti S211 training jet. Uncommon assets, uncommon background with a plan to create uncommon value for our clients in training so that then they can go and create uncommon value wherever they are. Maybe it's in a cockpit flying a Cessna 152, maybe it's in a business jet, uh, maybe it's in business with a business team, maybe it's in their family with their marriage and their kids. So it's all about creating uncommon value. That's our vision for our clients for Victory Aviation. This jet is a Marchetti, Italian made, a Marchetti S211 training jet. And it really is uncommon, it's a unique airplane. There's only 60 some aircraft ever made. Haiti had a few in their Air Force for just a few years and then the Philippine Air Force had them, still flies them as their primary trainer, light attack aircraft. The Singapore Air Force flew 30 some odd aircraft as well in a training capacity until they surplus their entire fleet. So most of the Marchetti's in civilian hands here in Australia and even in Europe are former Singapore Air Force aircraft. And so they came over here in about 2010, 11, 12. This one was put back together in 2012 by a company in Alabama, but there's only 14 or 15 of them in the US market. So it's really unusual. Uh, most people don't know what it is. We saw this one, we saw it at Oshkosh. It's got an American engine, a Pratt & Whitney engine, um, the Citation engine, JT-15 Citation engine. So any a and kind of knows what to do on them. If, if they can work on a Citation, they can work on this thing. A lot of engine shops, reliability, sustainability. Uh, it's Italian craftsmanship, so it's a very, uh, it's a great airplane to fly as we've seen. So from the standpoint of an aviation asset and an aircraft that we can use for flight training, in a unique way to draw general aviation pilots and give them a, a great experience flying a new airplane, it really became the perfect airplane for the flight training program. When we went to the FAA to start this flight training program, which we had to do because the FAA classifies these former military airplanes as experimental. So it's like an RV-8, a home built, it's in the same general classification system, even though it's got a full manufactured military uh, background and, uh, and development background. So within the regulatory structure, we had to get FAA authorization, uh, a letter of deviation authority to give flight training for hire with this aircraft. So we went through the FAA process on that. They have given us the authority to fly full checkout. So a pilot um, with meeting a couple of requirements for the FAA with hours and high performance endorsements, that kind of thing, can go through an entire syllabus to get the S211 experimental aircraft authorization, basically a type rating on their license. So we can go through that whole thing. The follow on to that is with the second airplane as we get that will be a formation training program. So military standard formation syllabus as well. So now we're going out and flying formation with two Marchettis, which will be phenomenal. And we also got the FAA authorization to fly unusual attitudes or upset prevention and recovery training, UPRT, which with loss of control in flight is a big, has a lot of visibility right now. Business aviation, private aviation, especially single, single pilot aircraft like Citations, TBMs, that kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of uh, visibility on, on UPRT, so we can also do that. Bottom line, we got to do pilot training for pilots. Private pilot can come fly with us, do jet familiarization, unusual attitudes, full checkout or formation. It's probably the most fun part of this role for us is to take pilots of varying backgrounds. We, I've, I've flown like at Oshkosh, I flew with a 19 year old instrument rated pilot that's doing aerobatics, loves aviation, he's an airplane nut. Young kid, real motivated, likes to be upside down. 
he went out there and was pulling G's and maneuvering and, and loved it. I flew with Citation pilots that have five or 10,000 hours, but have never been more than 45 degrees angle of bank. And it, so when you put a guy like that in an unusual attitude, 60 degrees nose low inverted, and all he sees is the earth, it, it, they don't really know how to react because it's totally foreign environments. A really neat part of this is just seeing the reaction to different people of different backgrounds to this aircraft because you, you throw some people in it. Regardless, it's a unique experience for almost everybody, unless they went through some kind of a military program. And even then, for me, with a, with a military background, every time that I fly this, it's an absolute joy because I'm flying with somebody else, doing training, flying a great airplane. Um, it really is very rewarding. Basic specs, uh, the aircraft's got a 2,500 pound thrust engine, about 4,400 pounds empty, it uh, will carry 1,400 pounds of fuel or 212 gallons of fuel. The speeds are not that different from general aviation. A guy flying a business jet certainly, or a King Air, or even a Bonanza or a Lance Air, a Cirrus, higher performance general aviation, you're gonna rotate about 100 knots on takeoff roll, set a takeoff attitude, get climbing, get the gear up, flaps are half for takeoff, you bring those up at 120 knots, climb at 150 knots. So we're not talking eye-watering performance compared to just basic general aviation. You're thinking a little bit faster, things are happening a little bit faster, you're dealing with a jet engine and some different systems like speed brake and things that aren't on most general aviation airplanes. But any general aviation pilot really can jump in this and handle the performance numbers um, and really do a great job and land it from the back seat like I've seen a number of, of GA pilots do. Victory Aviation does a couple things. When we talk about uncommon value and, and providing uncommon value, it's with the business training, with the T6, the SNJ. So that website is t-6victory.com, t6victory.com. The Marchetti S211 training is s-211training.com, s211training.com. My contact info is on there. And again, we can fly pilots, licensed pilots, private pilot, private pilot or above in the 211. And we can fly anybody in the T6. We can do flight training in the T6, we can also do the business training um, and rise in the T6. Okay. Uh, is there anything you want to add that we haven't talked about? No. Can't wait to see the video on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks a lot for, for coming out and flying today, Bobby. With the interview over, it was time to get ready to go fly. The first thing we needed to do was to have a thorough briefing on the systems of the airplane and the maneuvers we were going to perform during the flight. We discussed takeoff and landing profiles as well as upset recovery training. With that complete, it was time for the walk around. Okay, so we are all set to fly the Marchetti S211. Got the flight suit on, ready to go. Should be a pretty cool experience. All that was left was the last minute cockpit familiarization, strapping in, and we were ready to go. You all set? Ready. I'm gonna hit the stocks pump on. I got a light on up here, amber lights on. You're gonna hear the whine as I hit the starter. Okay, now look at the RPM upper left of the six pack. It's uh, the arrowhead indicator, the NH. High pressure is at 10. I'm gonna bring the throttle up to idle. Got a good light off. You see the ITT coming up. Low pressure's already coming up normal. High pressure yeah. is normal. IPT is decreasing back to 300. We're looking for 49%. There we go, that's a good start. Ox pump is coming off. Or to reset actually, back to auto. We can go canopy closed if you're clear. Ready. Okay, it's unlocked. Canopy's locked, it's Lights locked out. here. All right. It's pretty cool though. It's a different experience, it is. isn't it? Yeah, I've never flown anything even remotely like this. Good, good, good. And I'm hoping that a lot of our clients are the same, that they just want to kind of broaden their aviation experience and go through, you know, a military airplane and, and go through all the processes and training that that, that involves. All right, trims are checked. They're set to neutral. Flaps coming to half. Speed brake, I'm going to motor it out. You can feel it. Back in. Speed brake's checked. Flaps coming to half. We'll check the brakes now.
Next check. A little left and right, you can check your turn needle on the ball. Yep. And we're, uh, we'll call ground as we come around the corner towards the end of Lima. All right, Bobby, you got the airplane. Just practice protection. You got the airplane? All right. You got the controls. I have the controls. And we'll wait till we get out there to do our uh, takeoff checks, but I'll call ground here that we're coming. Mechanical linkage to the nose gear, I guess? Yep, you can steer, and it's it's purely mechanical. No hydraulic boost to that at all. Okay. Going straight ahead? Yep, I'm going to call ground. Get ground, good evening. Mark Eddie, one, two, three, Victor, Victor, taxi single, BFR to the north. Arcadia 123 Victor Victor Denton Ground. We're in the process to change the runways. So runway 36, taxi via Alpha. Uh, 10610 at 10, altimeter 3016. 3016, sorry about that. We got the numbers going uh, Alpha to runway 36. Uh, Mark Eddie 123 Victor Victor. Left turn up here. You got it, buddy. You left turn. And so uh, this is a good taxi speed right here just to bring in some. Rudder input, and man, we're going to be right there. I better get going on the takeoff checklist. Before takeoff, we're hot mic, we're flaps set to takeoff. Visually check that, speed brake is checked in. Ox pump is back to on, lights on, trims are set and neutral. Controls, go ahead and do the control, wipe out all four corners. You check them free and correct. I got it. Free and correct. Controls are free and correct. Fuel is full, almost 1,400 pounds. Oxygen is uh, empty, we're not using it. Ben Tower, Mark Eddie, 123, Victor, Victor, rip takeoff from 36, be a part of northbound. Mark Eddie, 123, Victor, Victor, runway 36, clear for takeoff, northbound. Clear for takeoff, runway 36, northbound, Mark Eddie, 123, Victor, Victor. And bring it right up and get us going. Just for uh, Christmas uh, 2, Romeo Echo, traffic's the uh, Mark Eddie departing priority route, we're clear touch and go, and then make left close traffic. It takes quite a bit to get this thing to action, so you can leave the power up a little bit. Okay. There you go, that's good. Yeah, now you can bring it back. Third base, Seneca 6 up golf. We are clear for takeoff. Seneca 6, six up golf, that Cessna is at 2449 on final. And he looks close, but he's two, doing about 59, so we're all right. Cessna, okay. oh, right. number is. two, uh, left closed traffic, Seneca 6 up golf. I'm going to have you just line it up center line, go full power, don't hold the brakes because that guy's kind of close. I don't want him to get nervous, and I'll, I will check the, uh, the RPM. Just a little bit of aileron into the wind. Okay. And so you're good to go. Go full power. I'm double checking everything. Flaps, speed brake, box pump. We're all good. All the way forward. There you go. Listen to that baby Listen spool up. Really echo. We're on 4. Left 5. That's go good on RPM left check. Here, Airspeed's alive. We got 50 knots, 60 knots, and just about 100. I want you to bring the stick back an inch to, to two or so, and then it'll bring the nose wheel just barely airborne. So bring it back a little more. It says two Romeo Echo. Little more. Here we go. Let her fly traffic. off. There we go. Gear up. Make left close traffic. Two Romeo Echo. It's just a four one Quebec. There you go. Here we go. That's good. Miles. 120. You can bring the flaps up too. If you can just put your hand to the left. There you go. Nice work. The gear up and up. Red lights out. Climb at 150. Beautiful. Nice job, Bobby. That was a great takeoff. Thank you. And just go that way. <laughs> this is cool. Good, glad. It is an amazing airplane. Really is. Yeah. Stupid grin on my face. <laughs> Good, you're going to get a video. All right, you can start bringing it up. Just hold about uh, 195 for the climb, but we're just clear the Bravo now. So you can climb above four and just go to 826 Whiskey Golf Regional uh, Approach. Get 8,000 feet, 8,500. We're kind of heading just a little bit left, uh, maybe 350. 140, zero. Zero, and it's going to maintain so 5,000. 8,500 be a good altitude. We'll out. keep listening to regional. It's amazing the, vi uh, the visibility in this thing. Isn't it great? The wow. visibility and just the flying quality is how responsive it is. I love that. 200 knots is a good maneuver in airspeed, so just I just want you to do some turns. Okay. Uh, don't worry about altitude, Over maintenance, niner, don't worry about 60 five, degrees, plus or minus one. Shore, just do 12, some turns, put some G in the airplane, and, and, and uh, kind of get the feel for it. And you can see that the roll rate is really, really responsive. 9 per kilo, we're looking for the traffic. I'm going to do the, uh, the G awareness maneuver, which okay. is just a warm, it's basically a warm up you want to do before you maneuver at all. I'm going to check the airspace both on the uh, floor flight and then visually 
Looking left, looking right. I'm going to unload a little bit with the throttle up, trim into about 220. And I'm just going to come a nice snappy rate of roll and then a right turn. Are you ready? Okay, coming right. And then we're going to put about three Gs on. 90 degrees. We're all out there. <laughs> now I'm going to do a little bit more. Coming left, clearing left. That 9899 Golf. Our four G's, and this is to warm up our bodies and the air, just to make sure the airplane is good to go. Yes, I said I have Two, I'm not, three, I don't know one. aerobatics very well, so. That's no problem, just, I tell you what, just make a turn to the north, and then I'll talk you through everything. Okay. Aileron roll is about the simplest thing you can do in this okay. airplane. All you're going to do is with the throttle up, just like it is, let's go wings level. Okay. Bring the nose up about five or ten degrees. Okay. Are we rolling all the way around? And then just put the stick all the way to your left left leg or right leg, either way. All the way over. All the way over, like right there. There you go. Oh. Hold it over there. We're a little slow, so the nose kind of scoops out down below. Not a big deal. You can just lift it back one, up to the right. Oh. Wow. Now, even right, pilots, shuttle, myself VH included, you do, if you don't do aerobatics, Ever or rarely, ah, you will start feeling, nine, eight, you might start feeling nauseous, I can make miles south okay. of the okay, so if you start feeling a little bit of, you know, tingly, then let me know. I'm okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to take it up, you're nine, still nine, flying, I'm going to do a barrel roll and demonstrate nine, a barrel nine, roll nine, for nine, you, okay, you ready? Okay. I got the airplane. Nine, nine, you have the airplane. I got the aircraft, go play clear and above, and I'm going to go left, I'm going to set up right out north, getting about 240 knots, looking out to the west, the airspace looks clear, there's 240. And this is not an aerobatic competition type barrel roll. I'm just doing the basics. Bringing the nose up to about 45 degrees. Start a little roll left. Keep the nose tracking. Oh, I want to be inverted at westbound. Right about there. Keep the roll coming. Roll, got a little bit of pitch rate. Bring the nose coming back up. Start coming back up to the north. Right about there, nice and smooth. Ow. <laughs> One of the things we do Number with the clients is the uh, unusual attitude. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the aircraft in a goofy, upset recovery situation, and then okay. I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna have you close your eyes. So I'm gonna goof up your gyros, your your, 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 your vestibular apparatus. So you're not gonna know which way we're going. So close your eyes now. I'm okay. clearing the airspace, I'm still flying the airplane, I'm going to set an unusual attitude, but first I'm going to do some rolls, and get you gyros, your internal gyros confused. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> so I hope that you don't know where we're going nope. right now. Nope. And this is what we do to clients, to give them the, uh, the ability to recover from goopy situations. So, alright, you got the aircraft, I have the airplane. you got the aircraft, with this kind of thing, that's kind of a transport category yeah, yeah. business, yeah, that's a perfect, you nose slice down, you can throttle up, which is good. Now you can start going wings level, bring the nose back up to the horizon. We always go autopilot disconnect, which we don't have here, so pitch, roll, power, drag, stabilize the process. And you just did that automatically to bring the nose back to the horizon, you stabilize. Okay. The big one, okay, I got the airplane. Yeah, the airplane, I got the airplane. The really confusing one is when you start getting nose low and somebody opens their eyes and all they have is dirt, you know, they have earth down below them. And so you want to have a, a good awareness of where the nose is in relation to the horizon, to, you may have to roll counterintuitively uh, to get the nose back up to the horizon. So close your eyes again. If you find yourself slow and your nose high, obviously you can use power. If you find yourself fast, nose low, you may bring the power back, you may bring the speed brake out. We didn't go through all the breathing, but we're just going to give you kind of a familiarization here of what you would do. Oh, okay, you got the airplane. I have the airplane. You got the airplane. There you go, yep, roll into the nearest horizon, a little more left wing, there you go, roll, roll, wings level, and then just pull it up, you can go full throttle because we're fairly slow. There you go, bring that nose back up, so stabilize, pitch, roll, power, drag, stabilize, bring it right back up into control flight. That's the kind of thing you could end up nose low, inverted, 60 degrees nose low, if you hit wingtip vortices in the pattern, you're dirty, or even at altitude, there was a biz jet at 30,000 feet that went behind an Airbus or something and ended up out of control for 20,000 feet and they barely recovered just because of that uh, uh, awkward situation. So that's just kind of a taste of what we would do with a client to do unusual attitudes. Fun cool. stuff, huh? Yeah, no, it's really amazing. That's awesome. Oh, the GoPro's looking at the ground. Yeah. Uh, oh, is that it? one out there, yeah, uh, oh, bummer, it must be the airflow. Yeah, uh, you know.
All right, good. Why don't we uh, keep the throttle coming back to idle. I'll do the uh, warning tone silence here as soon as it hits it and bring the nose up. We'll just slow down and kind of point us generally south uh, southeast at Lake Ray Roberts or whatever that is. Warning tone's coming off. That's just to warn us that our throttle's at idle and the gear are still up, which is all right. And keep the nose coming up, Bobby. Bring it up kind of to the horizon. We're just going to slow down. I want you to do a slow flight, kind of an edge of the envelope check. And this is what we typically start out with. We'll let the client fly real slow. See that the airplane is really controllable. Um, the speed do you want to maintain at that? It, just let it keep coming back towards about 120. And when you when you see 120, put in just a little bit of throttle. You can do it at idle also, but I just want to minimize the altitude loss. So feed in a little bit of throttle, maybe mid-range. So I want you to very slowly in, keep increasing backstick pressure. Don't trim any farther from now. I just want to have you hold the backstick pressure. Clearing in front of us. And then we're trying to get to the, the, the bump and you'll start hearing a little bit of airframe rumble, you'll feel it. We've got a thousand pounds of gas that's going to be coming up about 100 knots, 98 knots. Okay, you feel that little vibration? And just a little bit of drop. See that? And we didn't do the full like stall recovery. We just got to the edge of the buffet yeah. and then we held it. And when it finally did a post-stall gyration, really gentle, the left wing came down 20 degrees. Yeah, it was not bad at all. So you can see this does not have harsh departure characteristics at all. Now I want you to lower the nose, and you can leave the throttle where it is, lower the nose and accelerate, get towards 180 knots or so. Okay. And I'm going to have you put a snappy rate of roll in, and then apply some backstick pressure, just like I did in that G awareness maneuver. Okay. And I want you to pull, but I want you to pull harder to where you're going to get to the accelerated stall, where it's going to be at above a G, maybe two Gs, and you're going to see, feel that same kind of airframe buffet. And it's a cue that the airplane is going to quit flying if you keep pulling the stick back. Okay. So that's probably about good. I want you to roll five hard to, five, to the left or right. Charlie, that's good. And now just bring that stick Roger, back towards your, towards your lap. Back, 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 back. Back to you hit the buffet. Harder, harder. There you go. Feel that buffet? Yeah. Keep, keep pulling, though. Keep pulling. I want you to hit the buffet. See how the wing drop? Yeah. And you, you pitch roll power drag safe. You pitch, you roll. Victor, how low are you going to be descending right now? Uh, we'll keep it about 6,000 feet, sir, for one, two, three, Victor, Victor, if that works. I just want to make sure, so uh, like, I got a bunch of traffic right around Gainesville, 3,000 below. Let me know if you can to go below six. Will kill. Thanks a lot for the help. One, two, three, Victor, Victor. Center, experiment jet, one, two, three, Victor, Victor, complete. Vicinity of Gainesville, we're heading back to Denton, descending. Three, zero, one, eight, three, five. Huh. There were three, Victor, Victor, I think it. He'll hand us off to regional here. Center, sir, five, my okay. has do rent, so we'll hand the follow one. Yeah, man, this is a uh, pretty unique experience. experience. Isn't it awesome? Yeah, that's great. And that's, you know, that's our whole thing. We, Tom and I both have kind of an uncommon background. We were officers in the military, flew in the military, but we didn't make a career of it. We got, we've been general aviation uh, with FAA licenses and went into business. Tom did very well, did, got into the biodiesel field, uh, built a couple of very successful companies. And so with an uncommon background and these uncommon assets, whether it's the Marchetti or the T6 SNJ, we want to be able to provide uncommon value for clients in flight training and in, uh, in business training. Tower Marchetti, 123 Victor Victor, 8 to the north with the numbers inbound for the overhead full stop. Marchetti, 123 Victor Victor, Dent Tower, report uh, initial for runway uh, 36. Uh, I've got uh, four on final. Uh, initial for 36, Marchetti, 123 Victor Victor, welcome. I'm going to talk you through the approach stuff, so and I want you to fly as much as possible, so I'll we'll talk you through it. And, uh, needs a full stop, your number two, we'll clear touch and go, and then on approach. the go fly. And when you brake, just snap your rate of roll, apply a little bit of backstick pressure for some G. Don't let the nose slice, we want to maintain altitude, so you can brake now, come right. There you go, and the nose four, up there, four, good. Start your descent pattern out too. And then you can start easing the throttle back. We've got a long way to travel on downwind, so we're not going to bring it back all the way to idle. See how your nose is slicing down now, so level a little, little bit, you can ease your pull. Bring the nose up, we're coming downhill. There you go. And the crosswind is gonna blow us towards the runway, so we wanna have a little bit of a crab angle. That's good, now throttle back to idle. Rocket 3 Victor Victor, follow to 152 on about a two mile final. Looking for the traffic, two miles. Mark Eddie, 123 Victor Victor, copy. Okay, we can uh, actually power up a little bit since we got a two mile 152 yeah. as our traffic. Tower 3 Victor Victor's got this in traffic in sight. Is he a touch and go or full stop? Mark Eddie, 3 Victor Victor, he is a touch and go. Your number two, runway 36, clear to land. Number two, three, six, clear to land. Marchetti, three, Victor, Victor, gear in, transit. Mooney, uh, zero, All right. zero, ground, that one, guy's two, hopefully getting close. Let's make the base one, turn. One, we'll three, just nine, dirty nine, up at the base turn. So now, hold the altitude, and we can pull the throttle back a little bit. Shed about 10 knots and get us back to 160. 
and you can even let the nose come up or bring the nose up a little bit to climb. We're pretty far out. That guy is about a quarter mile final. This is going to work. Yeah, so hey, you can bring the gear so down, down, Bobby. Pilot knob. Keep that turn coming because that crosswind is going to be blowing us past the approach corridor. So keep the turn coming. And traffic inside. Good addition to power. Call the Mark Eddy. Uh, he is a full stop. You're clear. See how we're going to probably traffic. get blown over. So a little bit of throttle. The Mark Eddy, left traffic. Bring the nose up. Clear traffic on 36. There we go. Okay, ox pump on, lights on, gear are down, three green, you can go to half laps now. There you go, and you can trim back towards 130 or so. 785, uh, traffic Brakes is going to be firm. a uh, set to just, is in. Uh, about stay three in south left along 2440. Fuel is 900, eight. check your harness secure. Looking for traffic, 785. We're looking good on traffic. There you go. Now just keep bringing the nose up a little bit, trimming as you get slow. So 75, just want to verify, you did, did turn into the downwind, correct? Roger, we're in downwind. Uh, it's just 75. clearing the runway, that's perfect. Roger. He's at your uh, 2 o'clock and about... Uh, now you can go full miles. flaps, Bobby, and keep slowing back towards 120, uh, 115, 75. and then 110 as we get in short final. Man, you're looking good. Okay, so flaps are down, speed brakes in, gear down, 3 green, we're clear to land. Tower, Mark Kitty, 3 Victor Victor, we have 3 down a lot. Mark Kitty, 3 Victor Victor, Roger. I just like to tell him that to get it on the tower audio. Tower 152 Romeo Echo. We'll start throttling back just a little bit. Two medical roger contact ground, we'll see you. Get a little over power, we're going back towards 110, you're about 120, which is still real nice. Trim up towards 110. to clear touch and go number two. I'm going to lean to the right so you can see a little better. And the tendency from back there is to flare too high, so just get right down there towards the runway. A little bit of power off. Get it down closer. A little closer. Power all the way to idle. A little closer now, flare, get it down there, down a little bit, about 10 feet lower, a little bit lower, 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 get it down, let it fall, no, get down there, a little more down there, perfect, nice. I don't know what I'm even talking, I probably should just <laughs> shut up and let you get it down. No, no, no. We're later. getting about 100 knots. Okay, three, 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 turn right, we'll able contact ground, we'll see you later. Three, Victor, Victor, we'll go, we'll take it behind, sir. Okay, brakes check, we're good, I'm going to put check. the board out to help you with a little bit of aerodynamic drag, take it all the way to the end. So 785, tell you what, uh, Christian, yes, yeah, so nice 785, I'm to make a right 360, Thank make you. a right 360, wow. you're about to dump a Learjet on me at 300 knots. Right 360, 785. All right, now you can slow down to taxi speed. That was great work, Bobby. Nice job. Thank you. No, you were talking to me all the way through it. All right, Chris, thank you so much, man. You bet, Bobby. That was uh, an amazing experience. Uh, We'll put a link down in the show notes to how you can come fly with these guys. It's definitely uh, one of the highlights of my aviation career. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Our pleasure. Had a great time. You did a great job. Landed the first try from the back seat. <laughs> I got lucky. Thank you. <laughs> I got a good coach. So. Awesome like that. All right. We'll see you next time. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Well, that was one of the highlights of my aviation career. Really cool stuff. If you get a chance to do this or you can do this, I highly recommend it. So. Pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the smile on my face still. But anyway, thank you so much for watching another episode of Flying Doodles. You can check out our Instagram, it's right down there. And also if you're really enjoying it, it's patreon.com slash flyingdoodles. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode, guys.